And last but not least, from uh, for this segment, we have uh, Kwok Wai Chung from National Environment Agency. He will be speaking on grant call to reduce food waste disposal from commercial premises and enhance recycling. Wai Chung. Let's go back to the first slide. Hi, good morning, everyone. My name is Wai Chung. I'm from the National Environment Agency. It's my pleasure to come today and share with you a grant call to reduce food waste disposal from commercial premises and to enhance recycling. Next slide, please. I'm from the National Environment Agency, and we are the lead agency to ensure clean and green Singapore and in terms of uh, sustainable development for Singapore as well. Our key roles are to ensure that we have a clean air, clean land, clean water, as well as a high standard of public health in Singapore, and also where meteorological information is provided in a timely manner. NEA is also the sector lead for the environmental services industry. And uh, this uh, will include the cleaning, waste management, and pest management industries. We are also the sector lead for the environmental services industry transformation map. The ESITM was launched in December 2017, and this contributes to a vision of a vibrant, sustainable, professional environmental services industry in Singapore, as well as for growing cities. And this uh, environmental services uh, industry transformation map is part of the Singapore government's uh, efforts to grow 23 key sectors and ensure a future economy for Singapore. And one of the key initiatives in the ESITM is uh, launch of grant calls such as today's grant call to spur capability growth and innovation. Next slide, please. Since 2017, NEA has launched a number of ESITM related grant calls. This and today's uh, grant call will address food waste. This is because food waste is one of the largest waste streams in Singapore with high generation rate, but low recycling rate. In 2019, food waste made up one-fifth of the total amount of waste disposed in Singapore, but only 18% of this was recycled. And food waste invariably contaminates other recyclable streams, such as paper and plastics. Thus, NEA introduced the Resource Sustainability Act, whereby large food waste generators will be required to segregate food waste for treatment, and as well as to implement on-site food waste treatments in stages from 2024-2025. Commercial premises have informed us that they face challenge, challenges for effective food waste segregation as it is time, space, and manpower consuming. Stakeholders, including tenants, cleaning staff, and patrons, do not have the habit or adequate knowledge of segregating food waste. So this also results in a low participation rate in recycling or high contamination of food waste. And high contamination of food waste can also lead to downstream issues such as uh, um, choking up your food waste treatment systems that's already on site. Examples of some of these food waste uh, contaminants could be your the hard type of uh, food waste like durian husks, seafood shells, bigger bones, etc. While food waste tracking solutions are available, adoption level is extremely low at the moment in the end. This is also due to high costs of such systems. And the lack of food waste data by premises also make it difficult for landlords to track the tenants' food waste segregation efforts. And this also will result in non-targeted, less effective outreach in encouraging food waste segregation among tenants. Commercial premises also face several challenges in implementing existing on-site food waste treatment systems because current systems are also sensitive to contamination, as I highlighted earlier, and they also require a lot of maintenance repair uh, to keep it running properly. And premises also have limited space within their current uh, centers to house bulky equipment. And the output from existing food waste treatment systems, for example, compost or non-potable water, may not be useful to the premises owners who have adopted such solutions. And there's a lot of proposals to actually send these byproducts elsewhere, which is not desired. Next slide, please. As such, we are seeking solutions that are able to A, 
improve source segregation of food waste by the stakeholders and accurately track, measure the amount of segregated food waste generated by tenants within the premises. And this is with the objective of changing the stakeholders behavior to source segregate their food waste and to reduce or eliminate downstream manpower reliance in the segregation and transfer of food waste to the food waste treatment system. And this is in line with our environmental services industry transformation map to enhance productivity of such operations. And for B, we are seeking a more robust food waste treatment system that can optimize use of limited space and also generate uh, valuable byproducts for the commercial premises and owners. And this could include a compact system that would recycle at higher capacity or a system that's able to uh, tolerate a higher level of contamination and ensure that the, the output is usable for all. Next slide, please. Here are some of the details for uh, the call. Problem solvers are invited to propose solutions for either A or B. For A, the proposed solution aim to improve source segregation of food waste for treatment and tracking. This could in, uh, also shape, could come in the form of shaping the behavior of the, the premises, uh, tenants and so forth, or automation or with digital means and mechanical processing or conveyance technologies. Next slide, please. And for B, the proposed solution aims to develop a compact and robust on-site food waste treatment system that will encompass the following feature also. There's a, it can withstand a higher level of uh, contamination. It has a improved capacity versus current systems in terms of space, time. For example, a one-ton treatment system using less than 28 square meters and treat the food waste in less than 24 hours. And the byproduct is useful for the premises itself, as well as having a higher food waste conversion rate. Next slide, please. So any uh, proposed solution equipment of A and B should be able to fit within the current limited space of the premises, be easily integratable into the existing premise. Of course, definitely cause no nuisance or minimal disruptions for existing operation, require the minimal amount of alteration to current infrastructure, and comply with pre prevailing codes for safety and health, and also comply with our environmental, uh, various environmental acts. Okay, next slide, please. We have three demand drivers for this grant call. Uh, these are named the land, Changi, and land lease. For capital land, the trial will be conducted at one of capital land's premises. Capital land owns and also manages other properties, and there's a scope for scaling up upon successful trial. For Changi Airport, it will be trialed at one of the terminal buildings. If the outcomes are achieved, it can be deployed to the other terminals as well. And for land lease, the trial will be at JAM. There's a possibility of also scaling up to other land lease properties should the results be promising. In general, there are opportunities for other existing properties to also adopt such solutions. So properties, uh, could include large commercial and industrial premises, food waste, food retail establishments that also that will have faced uh, existing or similar challenges in food waste management. The next slide, please. So in summary, this is one of the key thing that you should uh, take note for the timeline. The closing date for this grant call is 19 February, 2021. For more information on what I've just shared, you can refer to the, the link uh, that's HTTP sustainability innovation challenge. And also for inquiries, you could also email to us directly at this uh, email address, foodwayscallnea.gov.sg, as well as to IPI Singapore. So with that, I would like to thank our partners, uh, ESG Enterprise Singapore for this grant call and also the organizers, IPI, for giving us this opportunity to share with you. Thank you very much. Hi, Wai Chung. Uh, we're going to ask. Uh, thank you for 
presentation earlier on. We're going to You're pose welcome. the question uh, once again uh, for coming in from our pigeonhole. Uh, the question that's uh, posed for you, we're going to just take a few minutes to answer these questions. Um, will existing on-site waste to compost system be considered for this challenge? Hi, for existing food waste to compost systems, as long as they could meet our new criteria of something that is more compact, be able to fit into existing space, use less manpower, and also generate something that's uh, more usable for the premises owner, as well as be able to tolerate a higher amount of contaminants. Yes, but current systems without development, no. Okay. <laughs> okay, we've got one more question uh, for you. Yes. Um, nutrition, uh, nutrient rich streams are common product streams. Um, you must know, nutri one once again, nutrient rich streams are common product streams generated from food waste systems. Does NEA have use or plans for such products from the food waste system within the scope of this grant call? Uh, NEA, uh, we are a regulator, so we, we also run our own waste to energy and uh, other facilities, so we do not operate premises. So the key is for nutrient-rich liquids coming out from food waste, they should be usable by the premises owners themselves. Okay, well, th those are the questions that we have for you. Thank you very much, uh, Wai Chung, for sharing. Uh, 